Shalom Kaysen here with the Rosary Challenge and today is day 34. Super busy, got a million things to do so I'm recording this on my commute to work. Um, so day 34, did I do it? Yes I did. How do I feel? I felt pretty terrible, I felt pretty depressed yesterday. Why is that? Well because I have a lot of things going on. I have um, gra graduate program studies. I have, uh, you know, of course I have my kids that I need to do parenting and that is my duty as a parent, not just to kind of be there and let the schools take care of them and daycares and whatnot. It's actually be there and teach them about the faith, teach them about life, uh, jobs, careers, everything like that. So I have the parenting to do. I also have a um, couple of business ventures I'm trying to get going. I have my normal job and and beyond. So there's a lot of things I'm trying to get going. I really don't want to depend on this idea that a, a college degree will get you the job you're looking for because, hey, I already have one and that didn't really happen. So I have a couple of you know eggs in different baskets. I don't keep all my eggs in one basket or my apples in one uh, basket or whatever you want to call it. Anyway, it was just really getting to me all this work that I'm doing and really working and staying up late and losing sleep and all these other things and really working my mind to try to get these things going. So I was feeling pretty depressed, but then I realized that, um, you know, our relationship with God is not simply a relationship of consolation. Our relationship with God is... It's just like any other relationship. In fact, it is the best relationship because God never changes. However, God will take his consolation away from us. The, the good feeling of, of, you know, being close to God and feeling like everything's okay because God's there. God will take that away. It's called the dark night of the soul. It was written about by a very uh, smart man uh, named St. John of the Cross. He was a saint. And he wrote this book called Dark Night of the Soul. You should check it out. It is a very, very hard to understand um, because he was, his philosophical ideas were, were beyond the level of thinking that we think now. And that was some time ago in the Middle Ages. He was way beyond the way we think now. But anyway, the point I'm getting at is the Dark Night of the Soul, as he explained it, is when God takes away his consolation, the good feelings of I'm close to God and God loves me and I can feel him in my heart so that he can know for sure that we truly love him in good times and in bad. And when he takes away that consolation, St. John of the Cross gets idea, this idea from the agony in the garden when Jesus says, you know, take this cup from me, not my will, but thy will be done. And Jesus says, I feel sorrowful even unto death. Well, if he's was with God the Father, how could he feel such a way? How could he feel sorrowful even unto death? Well, that's because that was his dark night of the soul. And all the way from the path, the agony in the garden until the crucifixion, God had took his presence away from Jesus, who was still divine, but the divine presence of God was taken away. And that's why he says, my God, my God, you know, why have you forsaken me? This is the hour of evil men and that's what Jesus says because the presence of God was taken away from the world at that time now um, that's the dark night of the soul basically we all must go through it because if we are to follow Christ and he says pick up your cross and follow me if we are follow Christ <clears throat> then we must be prepared for the dark night of the soul we must be prepared for our garden in Gethsemane we must be prepared for our scourging for our crown of thorns for our um, way of the cross, carrying the cross, and our crucifixion. We must be prepared for all these things. And even then, even before that, we must be prepared for calumniation, people saying bad things about us that aren't true because that happened in Jesus as well before he was physically tortured. So there will be times when you feel extremely depressed and you feel like God is not there. But if you stay close to the sacraments, especially the sacrament of penance and the sacrament of the Eucharist, Holy Communion, you don't have to worry if God is there or not. God is literally there. It is a miracle every time there is a Mass said because the precious 
body, blood, soul, and the divinity of our blessed Lord Jesus Christ comes down into the bread and wine. Jesus Christ is literally, physically, really there. Body, blood, soul, and divinity. And we don't have to worry and feel that, oh, it's, is God still there? Do I have a personal relationship with Jesus or whatever? No, God is there. Even though you don't feel it, even though it doesn't feel good, it's similarly to uh, firemen not feeling good about running into a burning building. Of course you shouldn't feel good about that. That's just, but he does it because he knows it's the right thing to do. It's also similar to a soldier not feeling good about having to kill the enemy. But that's something that has to be done. Similarly to in a marriage where uh, the spouse doesn't feel particularly great about being married at that time. And, and these things happen. But that doesn't mean the love is gone. That doesn't mean the fireman is not a real hero. It doesn't mean that the uh, military, uh, the soldier, does, it does not have patriotism for his country. Of course he does. Of course these things are true, but feelings don't always determine the way we should act. Sometimes we feel like we should do something we shouldn't, and sometimes we don't feel like doing something we should. And the video is getting a little bit lengthy, so I'm going to kind of end it there and say that we're all going to have our dark, dark night of the soul. We're all going to have our passion. Be prepared, but remember that Jesus Christ is physically there, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist in Holy Communion. So don't be afraid when you don't feel his presence. Just go to Mass or go to Eucharistic Adoration and know that he is there even if you don't feel it. And that's it for today. I uh, hope to see you next time tomorrow on the Rosary Challenge. And make sure you take up your own kind of prayer challenge and you you kind of make some resolutions so that you can be closer to God. Lent is coming up, so be thinking about what penance and mortification that you're going to engage in to show God that you really, really love him, whether in good times or in bad, sickness or in health. And that's it. Until next time, stay holy, my friends. God love you.